conducting nature of acids and bases so if you take some group of substances like acids bases and salts in particular suppose for example if you take hcl you take NaOH you take uh, ethyl alcohol C2H5OH and glucose we can say that if you take this ethyl alcohol and glucose these are organic solvents all the substances which are organic solvents when they are dissolved in water when they are placed in water they are soluble they are soluble but uh, do not give ions they do not give ion any ions so they are they are not good electrolytic conductors they are bad electrolytic conductors it is because of this reason we can say that they they are bad electrolytic conductors but if you go for hcl and in your watch when they are dissolved in water acid and base when they are dissolved in water they give hcl aqueous NaOH gives NaOH of aqueous and uh, they necessarily give individual ions they furnish individual ions H plus ion aqueous and Cl minus ion aqueous here also NaOH is going to give Na plus aqueous and uh, OH minus ion aqueous so because of the formation of ions furnishing of ions both acids and bases furnishing of ions because they are able to furnish the ions these are good electrolytic good electrolytic conductors they are good electrolytic conductors so similarly if you take uh, the nature of HCl one important point what we have to notice here is suppose you are taking you are taking NaCl NaCl aqueous and you are treating it with H2SO4 aqueous this is a salt reacts with acid it gives HCl gas or vapor and uh, it also gives another salt that is sodium sulfate aqueous this HCl gas, this HCl gas actually, this is dry HCl. Dry HCl, if you take, it is not going to, it is not a good electrolytic conductor. Dry HCl, note this point dry HCl do not contain any ions, so it do not ionize, so it is a bad electrolytic conductor. However, if you take the same HCl, if you take the same HCl, if you take gas and when you dissolve in water, it gives HCl aqueous. This HCl aqueous can readily undergo ionization to give H plus ion aqueous plus Cl minus ion aqueous. So I repeat. HCl aqueous therefore is a good uh, electrolytic conductor because it is able to furnish ions it is able to furnish ions good electrolytic conductor it is able to furnish ions so likewise until and unless whether it is acid or a base a substance whether it is acid or a base if it is able to furnish ions if it is able to give away ions in the aqueous solution then only we can consider it as a good electrolytic conductor because glucose and uh, ethyl alcohol because of their organic compound nature all the organic solvents in the form of organic compound they do not give away any ions but however they are soluble they are soluble because they show certain type of that is C6H12O6 
C6H2LO6, comma, ethyl alcohol, they are soluble in water. The solubility, soluble, but the solubility is because of hydrogen bonding. Because of their hydrogen bonding. But just because they have hydrogen bonding, that doesn't mean that they are going to give away any H plus ions or OH minus ions. That means they are not able to give away any ion. That is why we can consider both the glucose and ethyl alcohol as bad electrolytic conductors or they are very poor electrolytic conductors. So the next part of the discussion here is that is the topic is reaction of acids and bases. Reaction of acids and bases are exothermic in nature. As already we have studied in neutralization reaction earlier, that is if an acid reacts with a base, that is if an acid reacts with a base, it gives salt and water plus energy. This release of energy itself means that the neutralization reaction is an exothermic reaction. That means all neutralization reactions definitely they release large amount of energy depending upon the type of interaction between the acid and base they release sufficient amount of energy because of the release of energy we take the neutralization reaction as exothermic reaction. So here now that is a, if that is the case here one thing what we have to understand is when you are going for acids and bases here if it is exothermic reaction that is in particular if it is exothermic reaction yeah this is the laboratory laboratory precaution one important point which you have to understand is laboratory precaution actually if you take actually it's, it's always advisable you take a beaker in this beaker you take sufficient amount of uh, water this is water and in this water you place a glass rod this is a glass rod and from here you take another beaker you take another beaker which contains this beaker contains so here H2SO4 is taken in additional beaker and uh, in a container in a small uh, I mean beaker large beaker we are taking sufficient amount of water and this is a glass rod this is the glass rod and uh, it is always advisable for us to slowly slowly release the acid from this beaker release the acid slowly that is drop wise okay and this glass rod has to continuously this glass rod has to continuously it, uh, the glass rod has to be stirred continuously such that there is no explosion taking place when you when you are trying to stir the glass rod in water uniformly and uh, sim simultaneously if you are trying to release the h2so4 acid gradually into the water whatever the acid when it is coming in contact with water the heat produced by the acid when it is coming in contact with water because of the stirring of glass rod that heat is distributed uniformly throughout the water and therefore the explosion explosion is uh, controlled explosion is controlled that means what i mean to say is that it is always advisable to take large quantity of water and small quantity of acid and you just see that the acid is gradually released into the water and stirred uniformly when the stirring of the glass rod is done uniformly in the water along with the acid the heat generated by the acid is distributed uniformly and you find that whatever the heat changes are taking place that heat changes are controlled and the explosion of that acid in water is 100 percent it is controlled and therefore it is always adjustable with this combination it is advised with this combination that means i can say that if that is the case we can say acid acid in water mixing of acid along with water the heat generated is uniform and uh, when the heat generated is uniform the splash the splash the factor of splash whenever uh, you are trying to handle acid with water there is a kind of splash taking place between the two substances or two compounds henceforth the splash is avoided because the heat generated here between acid and water from this experiment is going to be uniform and the splash is avoided. So it is recommended, this combination is recommended. But on the other hand, if you take water and if you add in acid, water if you are adding in acid, just like previous case acid you have added in water, here we are adding water in acid, then heat generated 
due to this combination is not uniform it is uh, uneven uneven distribution uneven distribution occurs and because of this uneven distribution you find that splash splash occurs and uh, explosion also takes place splash occurs with the explosion so therefore the second combination is always avoided but whereas the first combination is always preferred when you're handling an acid with a water from this observation we can also add one more point here that is so from this scenario we can add one more point here that is whenever that means when you're adding an acid an acid if it, if it is dissolved an acid if it is mixed with the base it gives whenever an acid is mixed with the base you find that there is a decrease in concentration of acidic H plus ion solution and basic OH minus ion solution OH minus ion solution in per unit in per unit of volume per unit of volume therefore because of this because there is a decrease downward arrow represents decrease decrease because there is a decrease in concentration of acid and as well as base for per unit of volume that means when the concentration decreases the volume of the mixture of acidic and basic solution increases when the volume of the mixture of acidic and basic solution increases that means indirectly this whole process comes under dilution dilution of mixture dilution of mixture so when you use the word dilution what is dilution dilution is simply addition of excess of water to decrease the concentration of mixture concentration of solution concentration of solution is simply called as dilution of the mixture or dilution of acidic or basic solution